what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fia Foodie. I appreciate you guys checking by the, the channel. This is a very special episode today. It's the first of what should be a lot more and many more. This is uh, a guest appearance. I have my good friend Sean with me today. Sean and I have known each other for a few years now. Um, his kids and my daughter, his daughter and my daughter are roughly the same age, kind of all going through the same stuff. And his wife and my wife got to be good friends. So we spent a lot of time and hang out together. Uh, Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're cooking? Oh, before we do that, uh, check out Sean. His socials are right down here. Hit him up and let him know what you think. Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're doing? Sure. So today we're going to do a couple things. We're going to start off with a stromboli, which is kind of act as an appetizer for us to, to help us through the rest of our cooking day. Uh, then we're going to move on to some personally made pizzas. Uh, so I have out here a lot of the ingredients for both the, uh, the stromboli as well as the pizzas. I got a big green egg uh, last year. I used to be a steak cooker, and now I'm actually a smoker, a cooker, uh, and one of the things that uh, it evolved into was the idea of doing pizzas on, on a flatbed, uh, flatbed uh, out front, out, out back. So I'm really excited to show you guys what this is gonna look like. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. You've had the stromboli before. It's amazing. We had it at Friendsgiving this year, so it's a, it's a really fun dish to make. Uh, really messy in the end, but a lot of fun. And uh, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do some pizzas, we'll have some fun. Yeah, and so uh, this is a, an, also a special night in that we have the College Football National Championship on. Um, Sean and I are gonna be watching that while we cook. So if things get a little less crisp than they usually are, then please make some allowances. But let's have some fun and let's follow along. Go time. never cooked anything on a big green egg so this is gonna be a learning experience for me Sean's been really kind enough to show you some of his recipes and how to use this thing um, so yeah so when we come back I'll be, Sean's gonna be firing this up for us and you'll be able to see the uh, how we make this fire in this big green egg because I don't personally know just yet okay so uh, I'm gonna start lighting the egg here and I used to have uh, kind of like a, almost looked like a hair dryer to start the fire uh, I moved to the blowtorch because it's a uh, moves a lot faster and it's a lot cooler to do it actually uh, And what we have here is uh, some Fogo super premium charcoal it is big chunks um, What I'm hoping is you're gonna see is a lot of fireworks um, It gets a little bit it gets a little bit fun here when it, when we get started uh, So let's see how long it takes to this really quick. We got the we got the fire going right now. Uh, it's doing doing great. We just it just just barely just got it started. Uh, just a little bit about the air ventilation system to make sure that we get it really hot. We want this pizza to be burning at somewhere between 500 and 900 degrees, depending. On that'll that'll dictate how long we have it on there. So there's two things that we do. One, we want to make sure that there's a good air ventilation. So I've cleaned out under here all old charcoal and any kind of ash. I did that before you guys got here. And then I've also got turned up so that there, there's a good opening on the on the top as well. So the air's coming through here and up here, and that's creating a lot of heat throughout the whole process. So clearly we, we made our own dough. Uh, <laughs> and uh, actually, no, we, we actually uh, got this dough from our really good friends uh, here in Frisco, Texas at Eddie Napoli's. Great people that we hang out with them all the time. They make amazing dough. And so we thought we could try it, but we're already pretty pretty settled on how good their dough is. So we're gonna use their dough to make our stromboli and then our pizzas as well. Uh, we're gonna put the link to their uh, to their webs to their restaurant down below, uh, so you can check them out if you're ever in town. Uh, but we're gonna dive in and start using this to, to build out our stromboli. All right, so this is my stromboli. I, I've done it a couple times now, once uh, for, actually three times now, once for my own family once for uh, my daughter and her friends and then once for Friendsgiving. And I've done it a couple different ways. Uh, found out some good ways, some messy ways, and some not so messy ways. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a lot of ingredients that are really heavy Italian uh, and meat based. Uh, we're probably going to lay off some of the sauce that I did it the, the last time I had a little bit too much sauce and it was messy to say the least. So we're going to we're going to do the stromboli. We're going to have a lot of 
meat, um, a lot of Italian sausages, and, uh, a lot of ground beef. We're gonna have a good time. I'm a professional based on this. Uh, most of this comes from years in college where I was making pizzas. Uh, <laughs> uh, most of the time, I was, you know, I was, I was your college, college, uh, college pizza delivery guy, as you might imagine. I did uh, everything you could, you could imagine when it came to that. I made my own pizzas. I uh, delivered pizzas uh, all over campuses of Stephen F. Austin, and I learned. Go how lumberjacks. To, go lumberjacks. I learned how to uh, how to roll out dough. I used to make dough uh, early in the morning, and then I used to close out the shop uh, late at night. Uh, so I've always had a had a pizza in, in mind uh, when it comes to uh, cooking. Uh, it was the first thing I ever really knew how to do. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen while working at a pizza place, Sean? <laughs> Uh, so quickly, the edited version. Okay, the edited version is that I went to a house. And uh, some kid turned, uh, answered the door. How old? Probably 16 years old, maybe 15 years old. Answers the door, and he kind of had just a long shirt on. And I thought, well, what? that's kind of odd. And uh, so I delivered the pizza, and we do the money exchange. He then uh, kind of peeks around the door as I'm walking away. And I look over my shoulder and wonder what the hell that was all about. I get in the car and he is naked, pressed up against the, the screen, and uh, he flashed me. And I've never been flashed before. I didn't really know what to do with that. Uh, but I was in my car, so I slowly put it in reverse because I was, I was taking sex ed and they told you to kind of like neglect any kind of thing like that, just pretend like it never happened. So I did that and I drove away as fast as I could. And, And, um, and sort of your background and, and what you're thinking about all this. So I have three sliced meats that I'm doing here. First of all, obviously pepperoni is a good good selection here. Salami is the next, and then uh, capicola, capicola, uh, which is a little bit spicy. So I'm only putting that on half. Come in here and have a look at this. This is this is some good stuff right here. Yeah. So we'll take the, we'll take this meat and we're gonna just lay it out. Uh, and then I, I also have some mozzarella and some Italian sausage and some ground beef. We're not going to put sauce on this. I've done it with sauce before. Super messy and, and not really worth it, to be quite honest, because next thing you know, uh, we were kind of miserable in terms of the uh, how messy the stromboli really was. It was tasty. It just messy. gets it a little bit too wet and kind of it kind of it has a breakdown. Period. Exactly. And, and you can't really fold it as well as you'd like and all those sorts of things. So uh, so this is I'm just going to do a couple rows here uh, of each one of the sliced meats and then I'm going to put a little bit of the uh the, the browned uh the brown Italian sausage and the browned um hamburger meat right yeah thank you yeah yeah this <laughs> the spicier stuff down here at the bottom and I got kind of the mild brand at the top this is kind of more my style uh, I also have down here some uh, brown ground beef and ground uh, some brown ground uh, Italian sausage did you do uh, anything to the ground beef or did you just kind of brown it up I just kind of brown it up because we're gonna we're gonna do some spices on top of this uh, on here instead of in there so mm -hmm. I thought I'd just brown it up a little bit and then we can also be a little bit flexible when we build out our pizzas as well perfect let's see what you do The big green egg up to nearly 700 degrees. Sean, talk a little bit about what we're going to do quickly, and then we'll get and then we'll get this thing going. So we have a uh, we have a deflector shield that we put in there that will. It's a good Star Wars reference. It's a good Star Wars reference. And then we also put in there a little bit of a, a, a platform that'll elevate it, where we put the pizza stone on top of. 
And that way the convection will work uh, the pizza and the stromboli at the same heat from the top and the bottom at the same time. So that, keep, that keeps it up going, it keeps it really hot at the, uh, throughout the whole pizza at the same time. Yeah, and so we're gonna use, we, we have some mesquite wood here, and the idea is that we're not gonna smoke it like a brisket or, or some sausage or like a turkey breast or something like that. But Sean, what are we trying to do with the wood here? Yeah, the wood is we're gonna spread it out uh, so that we, we still get that kind of a smoke taste, a little hint of it, and we still keep the heat going but um, it's not overwhelming, right? Right, that's right. really the point. So we're gonna spread it out. Usually if I'm smoking like a brisket or something, I might put it in the middle of the charcoals, but this one I'm gonna spread it out so it kinda gets a little taste of it yeah. throughout the whole pizza. And we're gonna let this go to coals too so that we, um, so that we don't just get that, that really strong flavor. <laughs> So you can see the temp is no longer 700 degrees. So what we did was we got the temps way high uh, with nothing in there. And then we bring all these outside things in, then it reduces the temperature, which is okay. So what we're gonna so do- So basically the attachments absorb, are absorbing a lot of that heat right now to kind of cool down the internal temps a little bit. Exactly, yeah. It cools it down inside there, but it's about to get hot again really quickly. It just needs to get all the rest of those the pizza stone and the uh, convector uh, oven uh, piece um, uh, needs to get those hot as well. Okay. So we're going to do a couple things now. We're going to open it up. I'm going to put down a little bit of flour on the pizza stone, so that that way we have it. It's able we're able to move it around a little Slide bit. Slide it around a little bit, yeah. And then we're going to put this on top of it right thereafter. Okay. It's going to be a pretty quick process. We don't want to wait too long where this settles in and then this doesn't have time to. Right. Because uh, that can get a little bit messy. So we're, we're going to burp the, burp the egg first to make sure there's no fire burden so everybody's eyebrows off. Mm -hmm. There cooking it's going to take a little bit longer than a pizza as you saw uh, we started at a little bit of a lower temperature just to get that kind of um, to just to get those stones going so what we have here is we have some Neapolitan uh, pizza dough Shana had every intention to do this ourselves but it kind of got away from us so what I'm gonna do is this is a little bit big for an individual pizza for myself and so I'm just gonna slice it quickly um, right through the middle and you can see it's it's got that nice sticky um, Neapolitan texture to it. So this this piece right here, we're gonna kind of set aside and I'm just gonna stretch this out. You saw this, you saw Sean doing this. Um, we're gonna do it, put a little bit more flour down because we got this a little bit wet. So, um, and then spread this out nicely so we don't have any sticking. And then I'm just gonna stretch it and, and peel this out. I want it nice and thin so that it's kind of um, really just kind of loose and floppy in the middle, but um, this doesn't have to be a perfect circle if you um, if that's what you're worried about, right? So just a normal, um, not a normal, sort of a... We got a little hexagon going, you're good. Yeah, yeah. We're um, just stretching this out right here. And um, let's get this out of the way slightly. And so, yeah, I'm just going for more of like a, a 10 inch pizza and I want, see, you can zoom in right here. So you can see that I like it really thin in the middle and then I want a little bit more dough on the side. So I'm going to cook my, my pizza is going to be a lot more well done. Um, so hopefully I'm going to get that burnt crisp around the perimeter here. And I just want to kind of stretch this out and, and get this going. And one thing I'd recommend if you want that uh, burnt crisp crust is that you maybe put a little bit of the olive oil around the edge there that's a great idea uh, yeah because that'll that'll make that part really crispy and we're gonna we're gonna make some sauce here in a moment and we're gonna 
lay that down uh, uh, before we actually put the pizza together. But this is a good starting point. And then, uh, yeah, to have that real crisp, uh, fun outside, that'll be, you know, you, you'll want something to burn, like butter. Exactly. sauce so typically um, I wanted to use fire roasted tomatoes this is this is just what I'm gonna use today um, they were out of the the fire roasted tomatoes so it's a very very simple recipe all you need is a little bit of the organic tomatoes a little bit of garlic and this is that's a pretty fat clove for it um, some light olive oil and then we have some basil here that I'm gonna chop up and put in here too so Let's get this can open. I've never used an electric can opener like this. And uh, so, on the can opener. so we just have some whole tomatoes in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these out by hand and put them in here. That juice, the, the sauce that it's in, it might be helpful later on. Um, but yeah, so we're not gonna make, we only have like a couple pieces to make, so we probably won't need that much of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of squish this around with my hands and um, make a mess of Sean's kitchen. Nice. And cool. I want this, I want this, <laughs> I want this loose. I don't want it quite as, um, as firm. So this one's gonna go. And I think that I like this consistency so far. So I'm just gonna kind of break it apart. A lot of times people will put this in the, um, we'll put this in a food processor and get like a really nice puree like you see kind of at more of the restaurant style. I on the other hand, am just gonna kind of keep this a little on the chunkier side. But what you have to do is you have to kind of break the parts off of it um, to, to get this going. Otherwise you're gonna have some really chewy stem. exploding uh, what I've done here is I put a little bit of flour on top of the the, uh, the board here to make sure that um, it moves around pretty nicely um, and we'll we'll kind of burp the, the the green egg just for a second to make sure there's no fire coming out of it and you can see right here we have a nice little crisp outside layer right now we'll kind of shake it up a little bit I think it probably has a little bit more time but it's it's looking like it's uh, doing pretty well what I like to do is just kind of move it around a little bit Make sure it's getting the full, just uh, full uh, amount, so you can see it's nice and messy and fun. That's what a good stromboli is supposed to be: is nice and messy and ridiculously tasty. So we're gonna. That's what she said. <laughs> so it's it's cooking nicely. We're in a good spot here. We got good fire going on. You can see even the fire was cut, trying to escape a little bit. We got a lot of heat going on here. That's what she also said. And so we're we're ready to go here. It's already seven nothing Clemson. We got a lot going on here <laughs> uh, in terms of our, our little pizza night. All right, so we're gonna get back to the game, and then when you come when we come back, we're gonna uh, get these other two pizzas going. just put Chris's pizza on the grill itself so it's we have about just about 30 seconds or so <laughs> based on how heat hot that is uh, maybe two minutes uh, before that pizza is well and done so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this up this will be our little appetizer I'm just gonna take a little pizza cutter here and make sure we have nice big thick slices here That crust is perfect. That crust is absolutely perfect on that. Yeah, nice Look little. at that, how nice and well done that is. 
nice little mix in there. We have all the our, our ingredients there. It's nice and chunky. And like I said, nice and messy was the intent here. So, so we uh, we had some good messy Italian stromboli. Perfect. All right. So I made one before that is not uh, channel worthy. So I'm just gonna make another one that looks a little bit more aesthetic. Sometimes when you're making pizza, it's just a game of uh, learning as you go. So I'm just going to stretch this out on the pizza mat. Um, I'm going to go really thin on it, stretch these sides out. Uh, you saw, or you may not have seen that I cut this earlier. So I'm just going to make a small individual size pizza. I want these uh, thick pieces to really kind of stretch out. Now, if I was in... New York or probably Italy, I would be, or if I was Sean, I would be chucking this around my head and doing all these acrobatics and stuff like that. But um, for my first pseudo Neapolitan style pizza, I'm just gonna do it like this. One of the things that I learned um, is that once you get it here, once I get it nice and thin like this piece right here, is that it becomes fragile. And sliding this on the um, the actual grill becomes a challenge. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I can use that one, Sean. Uh, yeah, so we got this, we have this nice um, aluminum pan here, and we're just gonna slide the pizza crust on the pan and make sure that I like the shape of it before we start adding all of our ingredients. So for this one, um, that's about right for an individual pizza. I like the size, I like the, th the, the thickness of the crust. Uh, this is a little unesthetic over here, so let's try to work this out a little bit. The thing about dough is that it seems to have a grain to it. So we have some more of our, our pizza sauce here. So a little bit here, kind of roll this out. And again, this is cold, so we're just going to set this and try to, you know, kind of pull it out to the sides a little bit. Sean's going to go check on the um, the non-camera worthy pizza. And here we go. So that's our crust. Um, so for the other one, I used some capicola. Here I have some salami and some pepperoni. So I'm just going to line these up the way... I like them. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy with it, so come with me here. Um, over here, and here's again is our stromboli. So I'm just going to cut some thin slices on uh, on it. Sean, that's an amazing knife, by the way. Chris, I have to tell you. Oh, you know what? I did this last time too. So <clears throat> I'm going to put some cheese, hopefully without a mess. Um, it's not going to need... Your amoeba-shaped pizza outside is looking pretty good. Is it look nice? All right, we'll pull that one off. Is it crispy yet? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay, good. So I'm just going to string out the, um, the pepperoni and the salami. My previous one, maybe we'll show you that one, maybe we won't, had some, some copa on it, and that is probably one of my favorite. I'm a sucker for Italian charcuterie meats, the dried meats and cured meats are absolutely amazing. So you know what I'm gonna need for this is a little bit of pepper. And then I'm gonna put some basil on this. So come with me over here. And we're just gonna steal from the basil garden. Chop kind of loosely. You know, you don't even have to chop really. You can just shred this up and with your hands and throw this out here. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna put it like this and then the olive oil from this bottle pours very, very aggressively. So let's, um, let's use this brush here. And the reason why I'm brushing this on the sort of the crust areas, I want this to, I want the olive oil to brown out and cook up the, uh, the crust itself. Now, when you're doing this, try not to get it onto the pan. Um, the reason why is it's gonna make it <laughs> a little difficult to slide off, but 
Yeah, so we're good with that. Um, let's get this. Let's get this on the. Um, let's get this on the fire and and see how this goes. And in the meantime, we'll pull off the, uh, the sort of experiment and see how that's worked out. All right, let's do this. We got uh, his amoeba shaped pizza. It's looking really good. Got a little cheese on the bottom there. <laughs> they probably didn't plan on, but uh, oh, oh, a little heat. A little heat going on there. This is a pretty, this is a pretty hot, hot. Uh, what plate are we right cooking now. at? Uh, we're cooking at just above five hundred, so 500. probably about six hundred on that yeah. one. Um, it's got, but you see here, like you put the, you put the, the, uh, the oil on the outside here. You can see a nice little crisp on mm -hmm. the outside. And we had a little bit of a, you know, maybe a little bit of an area where we can do a little bit better <laughs> in terms of our dough. But for the most part, the pizza, I think it's going to be tasty. Yeah, let's let's see how it goes. All right guys, so we got our, our individual pizza here. I have a handful of flour. So I'm just gonna whisk this around um, and slide uh, uh, slide this pizza on. There you go. So that, nice. there we go, and that's gonna cook now. This will only take a couple minutes here. This thing is working at 500 to 600 degrees now. Yes. And so this will, be, this will cook pretty quickly in terms of uh, making sure that pizza is nice and crisp. On the outside especially, you'll see that crisp where he put the olive oil around the crust. Alright, so now we're going to put uh, pizza on here. That is... So right here we have, this was my Mona Lisa that came out really crispy. I haven't gotten a chance to try that yet. I ate the first pizza that we made. It looks uh, like uh, the Millennium Falcon. Another Star Wars reference from, from Sean. Um, we made a lot of stuff. We made a lot of pizza. We made some pizzas for his daughter. We made the Stromboli. What, like, what do you love the most? So I, I always think the Stromboli is, is it's so flavorful and it, it tastes really good. I think... You know the pizzas are are fun and everybody gets to have a chance to do them. But right. man, that that stromboli just has so much in it. You know that's really fun. I I completely agree with you. So the stromboli, I think when we put those wood chips on, absorbed a lot more of that flavor. So mm -hmm. you get it. It has that kind of rustic, gritty campfire taste to it. Yep. But it doesn't have like all the mess of the sauce. And and I'll compliment myself on this. I feel like our <laughs> sauce turned out perfect. Like mm -hmm. I, I, it was the perfect amount of garlic. It was the perfect amount of. Um, Saw olive oil and, and things like that. So, but I agree with you. The Stromboli is definitely the hero of the evening. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the pizzas, you know, they're first of all they're hard to transfer, as you as you noticed. Right. That dough going from, uh, you know, it's a thin crust dough basically, and trying to go from a from a the the pizza dough uh, mat into uh, room temperature basically to six hundred degrees, like right off the exactly. Mat. It takes a lot of flour. It takes a lot of. Uh, Skill? Yeah, you've got, it's a lot of work. That's why those those toast those uh, ovens that they have at place you know at places like Eddie's Napoli's it are so impressive because they can cook them and they're so consistent. And right. right now we're going up and down in terms of temperatures with everything. And so that's a good point. Can you talk about that real quick, Sean? So like every time we open up the green egg, we lose hundreds of degrees of that convection heat, right? Yeah, for a short period of time, you lose a, a bunch of you, you lose a lot of the temps. Uh, it comes down at least on the, the, the degree or on the measurement itself, but then it kind of it kicks back up really quickly. And you right. see that there's some times when we open that thing up and there's flames and right. sometimes when there's not. Uh, but you want to keep it at such a high temperature because you want that convection to take place uh, where the top and the bottom are, are cooking the pizza at the same rate throughout the whole pizza. Mm -hmm. That's the whole intent. Uh, so anyway, so it, it, it does take a little bit of skill, a little bit of a... Uh, practice and um, we'll yeah. get there we'll, we'll get, get there. there yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah so just to wrap this up i really appreciate you guys checking out the channel again the hero of the evening uh i tried the neapolitan pizza uh it's good it's not great really it's the stromboli was really kind of the hero so i just want to thank sean make sure you check out down here uh hit him up on social media and thanks for watching sean do you have anything no may the fourth be with you <laughs>